Now you can take your Bibles and your notebooks out. I want to share with you quickly this morning. We're still busy with a series called The Power of Prayer. We've been unpacking uh, the Lord's Prayer. And in doing so, we've discovered six crucial elements in the Lord's Prayer. Or you could say six Ps. Let's quickly just look at it on the screen again. Praise, purpose, provision, pardon, protection. And then he ends with praise again. We've already looked at the first three at those ones, praise, purpose, and provision. This morning, I want to move on, and I want to look at pardon, at his pardon. So in other words, his forgiveness. Now, let's turn to the Lord's Prayer quickly, and let's just see what Jesus says. He says, this is how you pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And then he says this, and this is what we're going to look at today. He says, and forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us. Now, you may be asking, but now hang on, Leonard, hang on. We've already been forgiven, haven't we? When I gave my life to, to, to Jesus, when, when I got saved, when I became born again, he forgave me. Didn't, didn't he forgive me there? And, and if he forgave me there, then why do I need to keep asking for forgiveness? And Jesus is implying that we do this on a daily basis, basically. Why do we do that? Well, thank you for asking the question. It's a great question. And I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer it for us this morning. At least I'm going to try and do that. But before we get there, I want to clarify two theological terms that I'm going to keep using throughout this, this message today, the, the explanation of that question, and we need to just understand these two terms, justification and sanctification. What does justification mean? It means that we've been forgiven. When you and I got saved, we gave our lives to Jesus. He forgave us of our sins. So in other words... We are not guilty anymore. We've been pardoned. All right? That's justification. Sanctification is the process of growing and becoming more like Jesus. That's as simple as that. So you could say, and it's not a word that we often use with regards to ourselves, we're growing in holiness. All right? Because God says in the Word, He says, be holy, just as I am holy. He gives us that instruction, be holy. Do you know that instruction is repeated nine times in Scripture? Be holy. The writer to the Hebrews in Hebrews chapter 12 says, says to pursue holiness. For without holiness, no one will see the kingdom of God. So he just, he, he, he tells us, he says, you've got to go after that. That's a pursuit. And so what is that called? Sanctification. All right? And so let's quickly look at it. I'll give it to you on the screen. Justification sets people free from the penalty of sin. But sanctification means being set free from the power of sin. So we've been set free from the penalty. God has forgiven us. Now we're being set free from the power. So in other words, sin doesn't have a hold on me anymore. I don't have to do the things I used to do in the past. Justification means being declared righteous. Sanctification means growing in righteousness. You see that? And so justification is a, is a once-off thing, once-off event. When we give our lives to God, we've been justified. Sanctification is a lifelong process. It keeps on and on and on. We, we keep on growing. We keep on changing and making progress. So let's get back to that question, though. If God has already forgiven us, then is it necessary for you and me to come and ask for forgiveness. Because doesn't the Bible say He's forgiven us of all of our sins, past, 
present and future. Let's look at what the Bible says in Colossians. God made you alive with Christ, for He forgave all our sins. He canceled, listen, look at that word, canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. And you can argue, didn't Jesus say when He hung on the cross, it is finished? Meaning there's nothing more that you and I need to do to add to what Jesus has done. He's paid for it fully and completely. And so when Jesus hung on the cross, he didn't, he didn't die for some of our sins and forgot some of the sins down there. No, he, 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 he paid for all of our sins. And so that's the, the amazing truth of justification. And so justification simply means just as if I never committed any sin. Now, it's important to note that not everything you and I do in our justified state is acceptable to God. But we are acceptable to God. Big difference, all right? So, so in other words, some of, our, some of our deeds and actions and, and some of our thoughts and motives may not be acceptable to Him, but we're acceptable to Him. It's almost like a loving Heavenly Father who absolutely loves the child, but knows the child is not perfect. Knows there's some stuff that they've still got to work through that. They're not blind to that. They know that, and the same with God. The Bible says in Romans 4, What joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sins are put out of sight, Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of sin. He's cleared our record. That's justification. So let me explain it like this, and this is just help me. I see it as two railway tracks, all right? You have on the one side, the one track uh, is justification. That's where God has forgiven us. On the other track is sanctification. That's where we're busy growing. And the train cannot run on the one or the other. It's got to run on both. Those two truths have got to run together. So on the one side, I ask for forgiveness once off. On the other side, Jesus is telling us to keep asking for forgiveness. So on the one side, he has pardon. On the other side, he has progress and process. It takes time. But those two truths we've got to allow to stand together. And so the train cannot run on the one or the other. So let's get back to the question again. So why do we need to ask for forgiveness if we've already been forgiven? Let me tell you why. Because I think it reminds us of our need for forgiveness. And it keeps our hearts tender. It keeps our hearts tender. Because if you and I never had to ask for forgiveness again, we may become a little bit casual. Ah, my sin is taken care of. It doesn't matter how I live. It doesn't really matter what I do. Because it's already taken care of. And guess what happens? <laughs> we don't have a tender heart toward God. And so I think God wants us just to be reminded of His incredible forgiveness. And just to keep that, that tender heart before Him. And so you find, as you walk in the light, you become more aware of stuff in your life that's not right. And the more you become aware of it, <laughs> the more you want to deal with it. And say, Lord, I, I, I don't want this in my life. And the more you do that, <laughs> I found, the more grateful you become to God for His incredible love and His incredible forgiveness and the more we love Him, the more we love Him. So it, it has the opposite effect of, of feeling guilty and condemned and I've got to come and ask for forgiveness. No, the, 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 the closer I get to Jesus, the more I walk in the light, <laughs> the more I become aware of stuff that's not right and, and I don't want that in my life anymore. I, I don't need this in my life anymore. And, and I'm walking closer to God and I'm enjoying Him more I, I told the 20s the other day at the Impact Conference, whenever I have the wrong thoughts, and not 
not if I have, when I have the wrong thoughts, because there are times that I catch myself thinking things, and I'm thinking, Leonard, where did that come from? And it could be the wrong attitude, it could be lustful thoughts, whatever it is. But the moment I catch myself thinking the wrong stuff, I just come before God right there and I'd say, Lord, forgive me. God, I don't want to think like that. I don't want to act like that. And what happens? The more we do that, it just keeps our hearts tender to Him. It's not like I'm trying to perform a certain way. No, I know I'm forgiven and I know I'm loved. But it keeps my heart tender before God. And so I think the reason Jesus tells us to ask for forgiveness is not because we've lost our state of grace and now we've got to get re-saved. No, justification is permanent. It's permanent. We're forgiven. But I think the reason he does that is just to remind us there's more to this Christian life than just justification. There's sanctification. And yes, we've been forgiven. And I've been set free. And my past is wiped away. And, and even my future, and I'm still battling to get my head around that. But I have a responsibility as well to grow and to make progress. And so that's why I think, that's why Jesus tells us to pray this. You see, God is both a judge, according to Scripture, and he's also a loving heavenly father. And as a judge, he sees us pardoned. Our sins been wiped away. We, we are clear. As a loving heavenly father, he's very much aware of the sin and the stuff that we're still battling with. And he wants us to be aware of it. Because when we become aware of it, we can fight it. We can come against it. And we can deal with those things in our lives. And so when God looks upon us, He doesn't look upon us as, as some angry critic, <laughs> but as a loving Heavenly Father. And that's why Jesus' prayer doesn't start with our judge who art in heaven, but rather our Father who art in heaven. And so when you and I pray that prayer, and we come and we just say, God, forgive me. I don't want to have these thoughts. Or, God, this attitude is wrong. God, please forgive me. When I do that, I'm not praying it. Please hear this. I'm not praying it from outside God's family. And I'm trying to get back in again. <laughs> I'm praying it from within his family. As a son and as a daughter who's been forgiven. But I've slipped up and, and I've stumbled and I'm just coming and say, Lord, sorry, I, I don't want to live like that. Does that help you? All right? Let's move on. So you say, all right, all right. What if I die, Leonard, with some unconfessed sin in my life? Well, that's a great question, all right? So listen, invariably, I think we're going to have unconfessed sin in our lives when we die. You, how, do you, how can you say that? <laughs> because I think there's some sin in our lives that we're not even aware of. <laughs> but we don't have to worry about that because we've been justified. And so all of our sins have been taken care of past, present, and future. The ones we're aware of and the ones we're not aware of. And so that's where you and I go, God, you're so good to me. Thank you so much. So Christianity is not about perfection or performance. I want you to know that. It's not about trying to live this perfect life, performing a certain way, and, 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 you know, and it's by our own works. It's not that at all. Christianity is not about perfection and performance. It's about pardon and progress. Remember those two. It's pardon and it's progress. Why do we need to keep making progress? Have you ever wondered? Because we get stuck. We get stuck sometimes with bad habits, with wrong attitudes toward people, uh, sometimes with bad language. Have, have you noticed, and it's not in this church, I know, but have you noticed some Christians who still use bad language? and they've been saved for a year or two or ten, and they're still using, and you think, 
Why is that? <laughs> They're still doing some of the things the world does. And so there's actually no difference between them and the world. Why is that? Can I tell you why? Because they haven't keep, kept growing. They got stagnant. They got stuck. And God doesn't want you and me to get stuck with, with bad habits. I, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be in the same place next year as where I am right now. I want to be a better father, a better husband, a better pastor. I want to be able to, 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 to touch and influence people's lives more effectively than what I'm doing now. I want more of God's, God's power. An authority upon my life. But I also realize there's the responsibility on me to keep growing and to keep making progress and to become more like Jesus. And so this is what I've learned. And, and th please hear this today. If I'm not becoming more like Jesus, I'm probably becoming more like the world. Come on. If I'm not becoming more like Jesus, so in other words, if I'm not taking steps and, 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 and breaking bad habits and, and, and uh, 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 wrong attitudes and, and stuff and becoming more like Jesus, if, so in other words, if I, I'm not making progress, I'm actually busy slowly sliding backwards and becoming more like the world. Because in our Christian life, I don't think we get to a place where we become completely stagnant, where we just stay exactly there. If you're not moving forward, you're sliding backwards. Because when you think about stagnant water, it can be a beautiful, clear, clear pond. If you shut the input and the output off, and you keep that beautiful clear pond, I promise you, in a couple of weeks' time, a couple of months' time, it's going to be a slimy green pit. <laughs> and that's what happens in our lives when we don't make progress and we don't keep growing. And that's why Paul says to Timothy, he says, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. And so all he's saying is he's saying, if you want to keep growing and become godly, he says, you've got to know it's going gonna, it's gonna to require a little bit of discipline. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take a little bit of effort on our side. So that's what he's saying. All right, now, let me move on. Just a word of caution, word of warning, as it were. When you and I make mistakes, not if, when. When we fail, when we sin, when we do things that, that, that are not right, that a Christian shouldn't be doing, there will always be people who try and define you by your faults and your mistakes. So in other words, put labels on you. Oh, you're a failure. You're a loser. You know, you, you're a cheat, or you stole, or you, you got divorced, or whatever it is. They'll try and put those, those labels on you. And, and so I don't know why it is, but you'll find there will always be people who will remember your failures rather than your victories. Don't allow them to define you by your, by your past. They may keep on remembering your past. It doesn't mean that you and I have to. If you've asked God for forgiveness, He's forgiven you. Now forgive yourself, all right? We've all made mistakes. We've all done things that we wish we hadn't done. And if I had a redo a replay, I would do it way different. And so maybe you find yourself today where maybe you've been in prison. Maybe you've been through a divorce. Maybe you've, you've done something that you regret, something that you're ashamed of today. And, and it's when, if that, that's been your story, and I think it's for most of us, it's easy to see yourself as, as, as a little bit of a failure, as a loser. Maybe, maybe I'm, I'm not good enough, but I'm telling you today, those events don't define who you are. Always remember, uh, our sins and our mistakes haven't stopped, haven't blocked God's plans and purposes for our lives. That was a moment in your life, a season in your life, maybe a weekend in your life, 
but it doesn't have to define the rest of your life. When you and I come and we ask God for forgiveness, He forgives it. He wipes it away. And the Bible says, and He remembers it no more. And so that's the beauty of of justification. That's forgiveness. But sometimes we've got to just remind ourselves that God has forgiven us. If you and I go around feeling guilty and condemned, we're never going to reach everything that God has for us. And it's easy. Come on. It's easy to go around feeling, feeling a little bit guilty, feeling bad about our past. But there are two things that you've got to understand about guilt. Number one, guilt never helps us. It hinders us. All right? There you have it on the screen. It's not helpful. It doesn't give you more energy or more enthusiasm and more passion to reach your dreams and your goals. As a matter of fact, it almost deflates us, isn't it so? Guilt sort of pushes us down, making us feel that we're not good enough. And so that's the first thing we've got to understand. Guilt never helps you. It hinders you. Number two, guilt comes from the enemy. The Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren. And so he'll do whatever he can to try and just remind you of all the mistakes that you've made, all the, th- the sins that you're ashamed of, all the, 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 the habits that you're still battling with. He'll keep on reminding you of those things, trying to make you feel bad about yourself because he knows then, then, then you push down. You, you, you're not going to rise up and become everything that God has for you. And so here's the key. If you've asked God for forgiveness, you've got to remember God has forgiven you fully and completely. And He remembers it no more. And so when you're reminded of of the past, it's not God reminding you. Because He can't. Because he, He remembers it no more. It's the enemy busy reminding you. And so what I do is when He reminds me of the past... I just remind him that I'm forgiven. (laughs) And I say, thank you for reminding me. God, you're good. God, you know, thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your goodness and your grace upon my life. You see, our attitude needs to be, man, I'm not perfect, (laughs) but I'm forgiven. And I'm so grateful for that. Maybe you're saying, oh, Leonard, you know, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. No, you used to be an old sinner. But when you got saved, you became a new creation. That's what the Bible says. Let me read it to you. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. And it keeps coming. And it keeps coming. And we keep growing in that. That's sanctification. The old is gone. That's justification. And the new has come. We're growing in it. That's sanctification. So, let me wrap it up for us. How do we apply this in our lives? Very easy, really. If there's something in your life that's not right, that you just sense, like I said just now, it may just be a a, a critical thought or something like that, come before God and just say, Lord, I don't want, God, please forgive me. I don't want to think like this. God, I'm sorry I said that. God, I don't want to do this the stuff anymore. God, please forgive me. And the moment you and I do that, guess what happens? Keeps our hearts tender before Him. And we've just taken another step in godliness, in holiness. Unless we are becoming more like Jesus, we're becoming more like the world. That's why I believe Jesus says to us, says on a daily basis when there's stuff wrong in your life when when you mess up just look up and just say lord i'm sorry god please forgive me and it reminds us of his incredible forgiveness and we keep on taking steps forward all right when we pray the lord's prayer next time we're going to pray differently amen come on let's stand i want to give you an opportunity this morning if you want to ask for forgiveness. If there's, if there's something in your life that's bugging you. Now, now can, I just, can I just stop there and say, 
You've got two voices playing at the moment. You've got the voice of the Holy Spirit saying to you, walk away from that thing, whatever it is. You don't need that. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the one voice. The other voice is the voice of the devil trying to make excuses. Why it's not so bad. Why may... You decide who you listen to today. I want to encourage you. God's giving you an opportunity today. God's giving you an off-ramp, as it were. Highway is going in the wrong direction. There's an off-ramp, and God's saying, just come. All you've got to do is from the bottom of your heart say, God, this thing, I'm done with it. I've had enough. I don't need it in my life. The enemy has tried to convince me that it's cool, it's okay. And I've even gone along with it for a while. But today is the day. I don't need this in my life. And I'm asking your forgiveness, Lord. Thank you that I can just take another step today in godliness and holiness. I just want to grow closer to you. Thank you for your incredible love, your incredible forgiveness. I love you, Father. Love you so much. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Have a great week.